Hello everybody, welcome to the Blood Bowl Super League show episode 2. So we, again we'll be looking at one game in depth, look at the other results, look at the tables, look at the fixtures. And this week I'm joined by Rick Reckless. Right, hello everybody. Uh, so the, our featured game of the week is Elyod versus Shawnee. Shawnee with humans, Elyod with orcs. And in the booth with me is Blood Bowl Jesus himself, Rick Reckless. Hello. Hello Jim, thanks for having me. Thank you very much for joining us. So, yeah, what do you think of this game, eh? Yeah, well, it's the, it's the classic uh, box set game, isn't it? Orcs versus uh, humans. Um, and uh, people have said that they, they do like humans for, for this build set. So I, I, I guess maybe they're slight favorites, but the, the Orcs don't look too bad. What, what do you think of, uh, of Orcs in this, in this format? What do you reckon of Elliot's team? It's interesting, isn't it? You know, he's um, he's actually outguarded by the humans, isn't he? Here, because this is the most guard on a human team that we've got in the in the competition. Uh, yeah. There's there's five guard for Shawnee, which is crazy, really. <laughs> and uh, oh no, it's, it's equal guard. It's equual guard. Oh, I was totally wrong. There. So yeah, so Elliot's gone five guard, and then a block black oak and a tackle blitter. So most people have gone a mighty blow tackler, haven't they? Most people have stacked a mighty blow tackler. Um, because they could. Yeah. And uh, he hasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really like all the guard on the humans. I think that's what I do with the human team. Um, I, I love guard catchers because they just get everywhere, um, provided they don't die. So, uh, yeah, and, and obviously Blood Bowl 2, they've got the armor 8. So, yeah, big, big, big fan of human catchers in, in Blood Bowl 2, and guard is just, yeah, crazy good on them. Yeah. Yeah, it is, isn't it? That mobile, mobile guy is what you want. So, yeah, like there's, there's been a few different human builds, but I, I kind of like this one the most because they can just pile in and out, or, like out guard a lot of bash teams, can't they? It's crazy. Seems a bit of a shame not to have a, a mighty blow orc. Uh, that could do a lot of work against the humans over 16 turns, and and most of the teams in in the leagues. And the tackle, it's only up against one catcher here. There's a lot of dwarves and chorves kicking around. Uh, although obviously not in uh, this is this is Group A, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, m maybe you'll get value from the tackle against uh, the the elf teams. Yeah, but I, I think yeah, I think I think I would have definitely gone mighty blow tackler and, and not the block because orcs kind of need removals, right? Like they're they're a generic bash team, aren't they? And if yeah. they get out bashed, or they don't get the bashing, they're in trouble. So, yeah, they just don't have the speed and the responsiveness. Yeah, the, the humans obviously have that catcher to peel away and be another scoring threat if the if whoever's the ball carrier if he isn't the ball carrier sometimes he is but if, if they're carrying on a thrower that's an alternate to uh, to the grind that the orcs have to do and they've also got the movement four movement seven blitzers that are they're all pretty good at peeling off so so yeah it's a massive speed disadvantage for the orcs yeah and interesting that elliot's carrying on a on a lineman and not a blitzer here i definitely prefer the movement six to movement five um yeah, and and if it does get hit, then then obviously it doesn't have the block as well. But yeah, the big thing is is the movement. Uh, movement five is is very slow, but but orcs have to grind down the pitch um, anyway, so it's it's probably less important for orcs than other teams. But yeah, it, it isn't nice. I, he's obviously just wanting to use his uh, his guard on his blitzers and his tackle. You could carry on the tackle though in this matchup, couldn't you? Because yeah. you, you could basically rule it out. Like, it's you're not going to be hitting that catcher very often because he's going to be protected quite a bit. So, so yeah, I'd, I'd probably carry on the tackle piece, personally. Oof, instant dub skulls. And he's only got two rerolls this build, hasn't he, Elliot? That's, uh, that's light on rerolls. It really is, yeah. That really is light on rerolls. Yeah, one, one reroll now for five turns of your own offense is a, a little bit on the scary side. I'm I'm not necessarily a big fan of having um, black orcs in that format, which is a, a well, is it controversial? Um, they they really are a bit rubbish out the box. Unlike uh, line orcs, which for their money uh, are really really good out the box, and blitzers, which for their money are really really good out the box. Uh, the box you don't get too much for your black orcs until they skill up quite a bit. Um, and uh, I, I I said this recently talking about uh, blitz pit builds to, to Dio, and he said that one of the top players had won some tournaments pre-lockdown, um, taking Ripper Orcs without any Black Orcs in various builds. Nice. So uh, appa apparently that worked really well. So yeah, um, yeah, just uh, struggle to see the, the value um, for what they cost in the Black Orcs here. 
That was a super dangerous block, that, wasn't it? If that had been a 1 in 9. Yeah. I'm sure, you would have been all over him there. That was huge, huge stun, wasn't it, on the Ogre? Out for a, out for a turn. Yeah, yeah, really nice result. Um, he's obviously the one counter to the strength advantage that the, the Orcs have here. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> well, that's, that's certainly a counter to it as well, just a random <laughs> removal, but instant apple. So I like that, but he's got 13 players and the apple, so he can just apple the first the first KO, no problem. Oh, uh, absolutely. It's so ridiculously important to this drive, uh, a guard blitzer. Yeah, you, you've got to apple there. Not basing the ball. <laughs> <'Cause> he, <laughs> because it's a terrible idea, but... <laughs> 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 not, not GG. Yeah, that's... Sure, Sean. He's always had his own way of uh, playing. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, there we go. There's oh. the ball base. It is GG. Oh, it is GG. Yeah, but that's a lot better with two people. Oh my God, there's another double skull. Oh dear me, first action double skull. It, it was a blockless black orc he was hitting with. So <laughs> uh, it, it looks really, really unlucky that it's double skulls again. But it was actually a, a one in nine. Yeah. Yeah, and that is, that is the danger, isn't it? But this is, I mean, this is pretty bad, isn't it, now for Elliot? I don't know how this has happened so rapidly. <laughs> it's absolutely horrific. Uh, do, like, it, it's so hard to get forwards and score um, in the remaining turns with this field situation now with no rerolls. And so do you, do you turtle and just hope for a better second half, but then the humans have a perfectly reasonable chance of doing the eight turn grind and then you've not got a goblin for the one turn you've just <laughs> like i'm wondering what on earth i've got in this game now is the orcs basically he does have the goblin so oh he does have a goblin oh yeah. I, oh i take it back right then th this this is obviously going to end one one um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's interesting he's, he's got like i mean this is eliod so eliod is mr safe isn't he although, although he's got his rowdy emotes <laughs> he's um he is mr safe so i guess he's just got to play super super safe and super conservative and if he gets the chance to go for it go for it i think yeah i think yeah late, late in the drive if if you can hold the humans up a bit so they're having to use all their players to defend so they don't like peel off any scoring threats then at least you can roll the dice on your turn eight if you've managed to set that up you can peel off a couple of blitzers um to be in scoring range for a handoff um, which again is is uh, you know not brilliant without a reroll, but uh, but you've, at least it gives you a chance. So yeah, th there are there are some hopes for the orcs here, but right now they've just got to stabilise and and try and make this drive a bit safer because going one 0 down is just such a big disaster. Yeah, this is this is all about the safe moves first, isn't it? And making sure yep. a one in nine or a one in thirty six doesn't spell instant loss. <laughs> as I'm, much as I'm can. trying to high roll a bit now. As the orc, so if if it's all possible, if I can get the ball safe first, I want to be hitting with my my troll most turns as the only mighty blow piece and uh, try and take advantage of the humans having lower armor. Yeah. Oh, surf here! Is he going to go for the one D surf? Can he get another guard in? I quite like I quite like this if it works. Yeah, look, look, this is the high risk high reward play I, I, that I like in uh, when things have not gone your way as they haven't so far for Elliot. So yeah, I, I really like that he's trying this and it has worked. Fantastic. So yeah, getting the, the mighty blow blitzer off for this drive um, is uh, is really nice. That's less powerful blitzes coming at you now for the next few turns. Interesting, isn't it, that Shawnee went with the offset LOS for this drive and then... You know, Elliot went to the side that he wasn't, but he, you know, he shut him down completely, basically, didn't he? Like, he got quite far forward in the first turn, didn't he? Like, the first couple of turns, Elliot, but then... Do you think it's just the re-roll yeah. is what is why he's he's backed off a bit? And humans' main skill, because they're, they're not elves, they don't have edge four, uh, they're not super bashy, but they are fast, so... They, they can be offset off to the side and seem out of position. And then one turn later, they've legged it all the way across and they're right in front of you again. And uh, and, and then, yeah, you've got to, you can't be rolling uh, double skulls and not blocking them well because they're just going to stay in the way. Yeah. Right, this has got the guard around the back. Bit of a threat, isn't it? He's, so now Elliot, like, you know, if Elliot just had the things in front of him. Be all right when he can switch here, can't he? If he gets decent dice, but it's turn six, so switching isn't as appealing, is it? Oh, 
and it's so horrible rolling the dice to switch before getting the ball safe. And if you get the ball safe, then you can't switch because you can't move the ball or at least the pieces that will support it. So I think this is why we see... Oh, he's uh, choosing to accept being based because he's, he's got the guard there, I guess. But yeah, he's... Uh... Hooked up skulls again. Oh, no! oh that's, that's rid Okay, this is very unfortunate, yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. That's that's horrific. Look, the timing of that, the fact that it was full on double skulls again, the, the rerolls being used leading up to it. Oh, well, the, no. oh wow, wow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess uh, what one's my, one man's luck and all that is, uh, yeah, so that turns it right back around. Maybe the Orcs are going to score. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So that was interesting, wasn't it? Shawnee could have hit with the uh, hit with the tr with the ogre, couldn't he? Um, but I know it wouldn't have still got that wouldn't have got him an assist in, would it? You'd have had to hit with this guy and get the ogre's guard in. So he could, yeah, he couldn't really make it a one D. Could, he couldn't make it a two D. If then you're prepared to invest the reroll, the ogre hit is riskier, even two dice with loner than one dice with a block piece without loner. So yeah, yeah. And then he just needed the push, didn't he? Really, and then he would have got two it, on a push. He would have got two D on the ball, and on a both down, he would have still had options. Yeah. So. So yeah, now Elliot's got a bit of a bit of a chance to turn the corner here. I didn't like that blitz, to be honest. I, I would have rather done the black hole block first and then maybe blitz, you know, blitz this guy around to get a bit more in front. I don't know. I mean, what, one of the great things about these one-minute turns is it's so hard to to look at these situations and go, okay, where does everyone go to get the ball through and get it safe with the least amount of dice? Like you just don't have time to perfectly work that out. Yeah. So you have to go off instinct a little bit, and, and then all of us are so capable of making mistakes under those circumstances. Absolutely, and it, this it, this at least gets that blitzer in range, doesn't it, by making that blitz and getting the push. Oh my god, he rolled oh, one and wow. got cast. <laughs> Jeez. Oh man, I'm feeling for Elliot right now. Three lots of double skulls and a GFI into your blitzer getting cast because you'd used your Apo when just some random hit KO'd your other blitzer we got. Like, that's crazy unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh wow, now Shawnee's out of re-rolls. And yeah. there's no one really free to it's just a 1D on the ball. Oh, massive coin flip. <laughs> and he uh, and it comes up heads for Shawnee. Yeah. And he catches <laughs> <laughs> Well, you kinda knew that was gonna happen the way the game's gone so far. <laughs> wow. Absolutely brutal. And there it gets the nice screen there. And then Gosh, it, it's hard to analyze a half like this where <laughs> so many crazy dice have uh, happened for both sides now. Yeah. Yeah, you, you you definitely feel a little hard done by as Elliot here, but but at least at one point it looked like it was just going to be nil nil anyway this half, and it it, it still is, um, I would imagine. So yeah, the catch has run back, hasn't he? So yeah, so at least he hasn't conceded. Uh, and he can have an honest go of things in the second half. Orcs are better at defending anyway. They can be a bit of a wall, a bit of a problem for humans to get through. Humans don't have the agility of elves to just dance around them. Um, so, so, yeah, this is this is still very, very much a game. He gets the power. If he gets a good bounce here, he could still have a chance of scoring. Yeah, and a nice KO as well. If he doesn't score, that's only one uh, chance for Shawnee to get that guy back. Oh, so he goes in the end zone anyway, and then he's going to try and dodge through to get it. Oh. Might as well try, but yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a nice try, wasn't it? Again, there was no, there was no, that catcher that came back to make the screen, you know, was a good move. And, but he, if he had been a bit more optimistic, uh, he would have had the outlet for the potential counter score, wouldn't he? But I think it was definitely right to do what, to do what he did. Yeah, I mean, as as Shawnee, obviously your your plan is to to not concede on your opponent's drive and score on your own in turn eight. So so yeah, it's it's going according to plan. It's whether you want that uh, contingency for if your drive doesn't go too well and you know that it is going to be tricky uh, against the Orcs in the second half. But he also got that. He also saw that Kaz on the Orc Blitzer with guard that makes things a lot easier for him. This drive coming up. So yeah, I, I think that makes uh, just defending for nil nil even more appealing. Yes. And now we've got so we've got the orcs with uh, no no apple. The humans are still have an apple. Both down a guard player, and both still with eleven players on, on the field. 
Yeah, yeah, it seems a fairly balanced drive. Obviously, the, uh, the advantage being that the humans get the ball. But yeah, as far as the 11 guys lining up either side, not much in it here. And that might, I mean, that mighty blow does equalise the armour a bit, doesn't it, really? If they're, if they're trading blitzers, then Elio's uh, guys are basically um, armour eight, aren't they? And, and yeah, it, it equalises the armour, but it still gives you... A, the mighty blow itself still gives you a significant advantage on the injury rolls, because more often than not, if you're breaking armour 9, um, you're still rolling 10, 11, or 12. There's more 10, 11, and 12 results combined than there is 9 results. So yes. then you've still got the mighty blow on over half of your successful blitzes for the injury roll, which the which the orcs don't have. Yeah. Um, oh, there's a blitz. Well, that throws a spanner in the works. Oh, that was a, that was a tragic. That was a tragic. Really stupid, wasn't it? Yeah, could have could have really done with the uh, the troll getting in there then. But it's still yeah, still pretty great to get the blitz for sure. Nice to be able to hit a human, uh, out strength them and muscle them here. Uh, this is actually, for me criticizing the Black Hawks earlier, this is kind of the <laughs> perfect situation. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Double Skulls today. I'll be honest, I hadn't seen this one live. <laughs> if I'd known how crazy it was, maybe he wouldn't have done the replay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Getting to a point where it's just like, what else could Elliot have done? <laughs> yeah. There's stump. only so, so many double skulls you can play around against a coach of uh, Shawnee's caliber. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing, isn't it? Like That's the thing with Super League. Uh, you know, it does have the potential, unfortunately, for DICE to decide games a bit more than they normally would, right? With There's not... Yeah. It's not that possible to be that significantly better than some... You know, play that much better than somebody in this league, basically. Um, and yeah, no. now it's, it's looking real. It's looking real bad for Elliot now. His, his blitz led to two stunned Black Orcs. <laughs> <laughs> and, a oh, and, and a KO, sheesh. Yeah. I, I mean, this early in the drive, because the humans don't want to score early, the stuns aren't too bad yet, and the ball's so deep that they're not going to like flood through and be able to stall high or anything like that. Yeah. So I, I don't mind the stuns. Uh, that Yeah, you definitely don't want to go a player down, though, that KO black... Uh, even though it's just a lineman, was it? The KO yeah. line, uh, far from ideal. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it'd be different if the ball was up here and like it was two Black Oaks on one side that were totally out of the game so you can plough forward. They're on either side and yeah, he's, he's going to take another turn just to get another two turns to cross halfway, isn't he? Oh, going out wide with a troll here. Yeah, El Elliot likes a big guy wide. Uh, when he's played Wood Elves uh, in the past, he often has a Treeman right out on the flank, which people find really peculiar, but he... He uses it on his offense, at least, as a pivot point. And what, what he'll be doing here is uh, basically saying, okay, the troll has that side, so I've got everybody else now for the middle and for the other side if I need it. So I'm just saying, you don't go this side, and we're going to play on the other two-thirds of the pitch. Yeah. But then, by the same token, Shawnee goes, oh, well, I've got a 50 guy and you've got a 110 guy. I don't, and you're down a player. I don't mind going over this side. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, tagging the tagging the guard black oak with a rubbish lineman. So yeah, that's that's pretty nice for Shawnee, isn't he? He's got the two the two linos tying up two of the better players. Certainly more expensive yeah, players. He's, he's getting really good value, for sure. Oh wow. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I I can't see that not being game, barring the uh the throw goblin. Yeah, that is that is something, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, I'm trying to roll all the dice now as the humans, and I, I don't even know how I'm going about it. Maybe I, I blitz the uh, the ogre, and I try and set up a foul with my lineman. It's hard to blitz much else that the lineman can affect because uh, they they lay on the floor there. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even sure the the uh, the ogre blitz is particularly on now. You'd have to commit all your men. Yeah, he could have uh, he could have hit the uh, blitzer and fouled him, I guess. Oh, he can just kill this guy. Oh, there we go. That's all right, and that, that rescues the other Black Hawk, who can then go and have to hit the troll. Yeah, okay. This is a problem now. Like, you're, you're committing another one of your main players off to the right to activate the troll. Like, I think if you want to put your troll there to hold that part of the pitch, you, you just leave him there. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. 
Yeah, but speaking of the foul, I did quite like the... He could have blitzed this blitzer, couldn't he? It chained the ogre out. And then he could have, like, yep. had a, quite a big foul there. That, that could have been an idea, I guess. He had to high roll something, but thankfully he got the uh, got the kill on the blitz anyway. So just the one player down now. Yeah. And Sean, he's still humans. He is, like, outstrengthed in, in terms of players. Like, obviously having an extra player on the field helps. But yeah. the players that are on there, he is he is outstrength by, isn't he, in general? Significantly. And and one thing I really hate about humans, and I'm sure Sean has got his reasons for it here, and it, it is fine because he's going to have options later on, but just the human thrower is so slow as a ball carrier compared to the rest of the human team, um, which is like the worst thing, the most thing you want on your ball carrier is movement. So he, he could be carrying on a catcher right now if he chose to. And then he'd, he'd have a like he'd have made a bit more progression here if that was the case, but uh, he's going with the short hand strength three. Yeah, I mean he could have also failed the pick up right with a catcher, in which case then the throw. Yeah, he'd then be still further back. Yeah, it is true. Yeah. And and it gives you less, you know, if the drive goes badly, it gives you less peel off options later on. Yeah, Whereas at least this way you you can hand off to a catcher or pass to a catcher if you need to to score. Yeah, I absolutely love the the old handoff plays for humans. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty great weapon to have, isn't it? That you can just do a short pass or like you know a, a well a quick pass or a, a handoff, and then you can suddenly move the ball miles. Oh, there's an, there's another one gone. Yeah, yeah, really. Ah, there we go, power up. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Oh yeah, like you're really running out of any meaningful chances to apo anything now. So yeah, that's de definitely should be an apo. Yeah, good play from Shawnee. Surely he just blitzes him down and turns the corner here. Looks like it. Looks like it. Oh! Resist the temptation. That would. That was a real tempting reroll, wasn't it? Yeah, but was the was the, where's that guy just run from? Yeah, I, I guess the ball I think was safe. So yeah, yeah, you could you could have rerolled that. Yeah, very disciplined, whether right or wrong, very disciplined to not use one of your three rerolls by turn twelve. Um, I, he's obviously still in a fine situation. But it would have been yeah, nice. Too, yeah, look at this chain though, the chain, the chain options here. Oh yeah, really nice from from Elliot. So he's made made the gap. And he's got a, a guard blitzer free for a one dice. Mm. You could free. Oof, that was a risky block. Wasn't it? Oh, no, no, he had the other one as well. So now you can get two dice, right? No, I don't think so, because he can't cancel. Yeah, yeah. This, oh, he's, this will guy, he have, this he'd have to double GF by the black orc or something? No, this, this lineman here. This lineman, uh, this lineman comes through with two GFIs and fails. What square are you blitzing from? Uh, behind. Oh, there's a lineman there. shit. Yeah, there's yeah. a lineman there. Oh, that was probably... So you, oh, you'd have to GFI. You could GFI the Black Orc to tag him. I don't think that that Black Orc had activated. So, right. it's, yeah, it was It was one more... G, it was four GF. It was a four GFI player, wasn't it, for a two dice? And he snaked the very first one, did he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that's better than just 1D for a, one, one GFI for a 1D. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to sambar it later. My, I'm not <laughs> terrible at maths, but I couldn't tell you that off the top of my head. <laughs> I guess this has got like more chance of it, just like something good happening, though, right? You, you've based the ball with, a, with an orc, and then you've based that guy with a black. Your black orc orcs in position, yeah. Unlike now, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. I, I I really liked it. It was it was a really and starting with the chain push as well. In one minute turns, it was really really nice from Elliot, and and a little bit unlucky that it's come off as badly as it did. Yeah, and that and that then that that gave him that turn that he wanted last turn to uh, turn the corner and get behind the team. It's actually just worked in Shawnee's favour, hasn't it? Really, it just gave him a free turn almost. <laughs> yeah. Almost the best Elliot can hope to do here is force him in on turn 15 uh, and have a two turn as Orcs, which without Mr. Throw, and I'm sorry because I do hate Mr. Throw as well, but in NAF format, he has some purposes, especially on short drives. Yeah. And uh, yeah, without Mr. Throw, two turning with Orcs is uh, not fun. No. And especially if War Dancers exist, like I, I can't believe nobody took, uh, nobody took Wood Elves. 
Like Yeah. I, I was amazed nobody took what else. Yeah. I mean especially is not like that's why Anarin was invited, right? He's gonna have Wood Elf. <laughs> He's the most famous Wood Elf coach there is in Blood Bowl 2. <laughs> and then but he does like halflings. And, and the I've said it before, the stunty package in this build is the best that I've ever seen in any tournament ever. So if you were ever gonna be like, okay, I'm going to enjoy stunties being the most powerful I've ever been able to enjoy them. Yes, I'm not saying they're good, but, but the best they will ever be. This is it. This is the one chance. So I completely understand why he, why he took uh, the, uh, the halflings. Yeah. I think he got ridiculously unlucky to get so many dwarves and chorfs in his, <laughs> his uh, league. Yeah, no. <laughs> Horrific. Horrific amount of dwarves. Wow, making all the three pluses this turn, Shawnee. I think that was yeah, maybe more critical than the Blitz. I, I think I might want to do that one first. I mean, he's got the rerolls and he's got the turns. Like, of course he's going to attempt those. The question yeah, is, absolutely. can Elliot get the two turn now, right? Yeah, can he Can he even get enough pressure on? And then he's, he's only got the one reroll, so does he use it for... Uh, Speculative sack play if Shawnee does try and stall 15, or does he save it for the Goblin one turn? Yeah. So, it's a tricky choice. Can, can he base the ball here? Yeah. No, I, don't, I, think I guess the good thing about playing against humans rather than them being elves is that as long as you base the catchers, if he, if he wants to dodge to make a screen again, every dodge is a 1 in 9 risk. Yeah. Oh, he does the dodge on the GA tries to base. Well, yeah, that means we've got not a... He can't stall this, can he? This is way too risky. With these guys being opposite sides. Absolutely, yeah. I, I think you, you definitely fancy your chances with the speed of the humans to stop an orc two-turn. I guess on a pow... Nah, you just, you just, you just can't. There's no way to call. <laughs> so, yeah, very nice. Very nice by Elliot to actually make it an early score, I think, on that drive. He was getting out bashed, wasn't he? And... Uh, yeah, he, he'd rolled another double skulls. He got outbashed at the start. He found a really nice sack play that immediately <laughs> failed. Um, yeah, I, uh, so yeah, to then buy yourself a two turn is, is pretty good going. Yeah. And now he's down with 10 players. I, I don't love Elliot's team, but I do think he's played this game really well. And I didn't catch his other ones, so may, maybe, maybe it really suits him. But, but he's a big Ripper fan, Elliot. Like, really, like, the biggest Ripper fan I know. So, uh, I'd, I'd love to have seen him take uh, Ripper Orcs. Yeah, that would have been that would have been something, wouldn't it? Because, like, I guess, it depends on how many skills you've got as well, I guess, for, like, the build. Because with this stacking, you could just stack, like, Mighty Blow Tackle, couldn't you? And then three guards. And then... Yeah, I, I don't think there's enough skills in this build for you to take one of the teams that has too many positionals. Or at least you have to drop some of those positionals. Um... Because you just you can't skill up all your positions. We see an unskilled Black yeah. Orc on the LOS there. The Troll hasn't got guard. Like you yeah. say, he hasn't even stacked Mighty Blow Tackle. You're going too thin on the ground for me to have a nine-positional um, team. Yeah, you, good shot. Oh, that's a horrible kick. That is, he's got, oh my god. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> terrific. <laughs> so he's going to have to get a guy up here. Oh. He's gonna have to get a guy back to pass it to, so that then that guy can then pick it up and hand it off to the goblin, and obviously wants the scoring threats as well, so that Shawnee has got to leave the goblin pass on, hasn't he? Yeah, it's nice to have the the options because, like you say, yeah, if Shawnee commits to one, it, there's gonna be one that Shawnee can't fully shut down. You would imagine. Yeah. Wow, he's got to re-roll that. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> but was that a mistake by Elliot not having a blitzer there, right? That was just a one in nine. Could have had a blitzer on one side yeah. of the troll. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, I see what you mean. So he's obviously go thinking he wanted to... On, on a better kick, he wanted to get all his... Movement players forwards, yes. um, which is why he's done that. So you know, it's it's just so it's so the kick was so bad. I think that's that's made this yeah look look 
worse having the, the Black Orcs next to the Troll. Yeah, and it is one minute turns, and it is versus Shawnee, you know, like, I'm not being... Oh, <laughs> yeah. Not, not really being as critical as I may sound. <laughs> no, of course, and, you know... It's very possible to play a, an utterly horrific game under these circumstances, isn't it? With, you know, yes. one of the best players. Because one thing people forget is that the best players not only, like, solve the problems really well, but they you're setting problems for your opponent. Yes. So you play a one-minute turns against a world-class player. They're setting you incredible problems to solve, and you've got absolutely no time to, to solve them. Yeah, that's one, of, that's one of the things where people, you know, I like this, actually, because he's marking these... He's basing the ball rather than messing around with the goblin or the troll. That's pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah. But it's it's one of those things where people say like vampires and kids live hard in one minute turns, and it's like well, it's hard for your opponent to deal with them as well, isn't it? That's the thing. Yeah. And it's definitely same, yeah. yeah. It's really, it's really thing. hard to set your defense correctly against vampires and kids live. And yeah, what one minute turns to do it is is horrible. <laughs> so he can't. The, the brilliant, brilliant position of this guy here it stopped. It stopped Elliot getting the easy chain away and then yeah, having fantastic. somebody to pick it up and stuff. So, yeah, he was going for the goblin toss. Couldn't get it off. And uh, a great win for Shawnee. Yeah. Um, and uh, is, is that... Well, I'm sure you'll show the table in a minute. Is that Shawnee's second win? Um, this is this was his first game. He got a buy in the first week. Ah, okay. So this was his first match. I tell you what, I've I've missed playing. Like I, I obviously this is my bye week, which is why you've invited me on, and, and thank you for that. But uh, yeah, like I've I've really missed it. I've got my uh, third round game this evening, uh, and uh, really looking forward to to being back in BBSL. So then we've got uh, Crucifer versus Gadir, Nick. Uh One nil win for Cruz, and uh, you watched this game, didn't you, Rick? <laughs> uh, I did. Yeah, I managed to to catch this one, and it was a uh, really high standard. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the, the second half was of note. Uh, I, I think it was that Crucifer ended up down some players, which is understandable with Pro Elves. Um, but uh, he certainly got into a, a bit of a bad situation. So he went for a rowdy sack, realizing that it, it might be his best chance. And he, he got the sack, but he didn't quite get the recovery, and Nick recovered. Uh, and so then that looks over, and I thought, oh, this is definitely going to be 1-1. One, one. And then Crucifer managed to get back and just in an annoying enough uh, position late in the drive to force Nick to roll a few dice to score, and, and Nick failed. Um, and and so Cruzfer picked up the win, and yeah, just it was fantastic play from Cruzfer. Certainly not badly played from Nick, but really impressive from Cruzfer. And uh, it is his second team pro elves. He's he's absolutely phenomenal with them. Not everyone sees him play stuff other than Chorfs, but there was a season a few seasons back where he qualified six different teams uh, just to kind of prove a point. He is basically capable with anything at a very very high level. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's a great coach. And the final game for Group A was Fatin and his Pro Elves versus Kanor and his Skaven. Did you see yeah, this? Yeah, I, I didn't catch this one. I really want to watch Kanor a bit. So, Kanor is, is a perfectly solid Blood Bowl coach, right? And he's been playing for years. But you, you've got two Super Leagues where you've got people that have won CCLs, Fumbles, Blitz Pits, you, you know, you, you name it. And and so you, you think may, maybe Kanor isn't necessarily going to hold his own. and But then... I actually looked at his CCL Skaven record, and it's it's incredible. It's like way in the 70s, so it's as good as anybody's. And he's played brilliantly so far, so it's it's fantastic to see um, because he's he's such a great character to have in the BBSL, and it's so good to see him where we don't normally competing against these coaches, and for them to for for then for him to hold his own is is really really interesting. So I'm really dying to catch one of his games, um, and he's done well in both of his games so far. But no, I didn't manage to watch this one unfortunately. Yeah, I, th I think I watched some. I think the, these two were on the same, like literally exactly the same time. Uh, ah. This game and the and the Chris game, and I was trying to watch. I was trying to watch four streams and two games all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think they both played pretty well, and like you know, it, it, like that. It, it the, these games tend towards one one, don't they? That's the, that's the thing, really. Um, yeah. You know, these games are going to tend towards one nil because both people are, you know, both coaches are always going to be good in the games, and then you know, yeah. So you you've got to try and break that one one stalemate, and obviously in in this case, and in the previous one, um, you know, they just they they didn't. <laughs> yeah, it's all touch and go as to whether the one one gets broken, like you say. Um, and it it's the massive difference. People are like, oh, it's the same as it's just going to be the same as Blitzbit qualifiers. Well, no. Blitzbit qualifiers are overtime, and it's incredible how much of a difference 
Uh, that that actually makes. I've just noticed the stadium here is my fridge. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's about. <laughs> um, but uh, but that's great. Man. So but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but know. yeah, you're absolutely right. And it was my only like worry about bringing the the ogres myself was that I think they're pretty good in overtime format. But we'll we'll have to wait and see how they how they hold up in uh, in regular time. Because yeah, but and any team like you say breaking the one one is is the challenge. And against top coaches, that's really really tough. Yeah. So here's the table after after two games: Crucifer and Fatten, the two pro elves, both with a win and a draw, top of the table. Yeah, re really impressive. Oh, and and this is nice because you've taken the the bye weeks off, yeah. um, so so there's there's no confusion on that. Yeah, I, you know what? It's making me think again about uh, pro elves for for Blitzbit. I might have to go away and have a look at what these guys have done. They're both ridiculously good pro elf coaches. I've already said it about Crucifer, but yeah, Fatin as well, in, insanely good pro elf coach. So uh, so you know, a lot of credit to them for for getting uh, their their three points. But uh, but it does make you think maybe the pro elves are quite strong in this format yeah um, we we Sorry. have seen shawnee just come in with his win though so that's he's the only guy on 100 percent so far obviously having played a game less so are these three gonna gonna break away at the top of the table it's certainly possible nick's an amazing coach with a good team but he's got off to a really unfortunate start um El elliot as well same but he's he's, he's obviously yeah got, got off to a an, an the, not the start he'd want. I'm, I'm probably going to struggle. Kanor, you know, like, like I said, I'm really impressed that he's come in and, and not lost in either of his games so far. Got the draws. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I think now, Shawnee, Fatten and Cruzfer are, are massive favourites for it to be a three-way dance between them. Yeah, I think I think that sounds good. And yeah, it's a great point about the pro elves. Like, the thing with elves is like, yeah, okay, wood elves are the best. And dark elves aren't that far behind. But if you, if you give high elves and pro elves a bit more tools, they, they can be really good, can't they? I, I remember uh, when Davo won the, the biggest blitz pit, didn't he? His high elves team, I thought, was an amazing build. And so, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe Chris and Fatten gonna, found this. I was just going to bring that up. Great minds. Yeah, exactly. He, he really set the, uh, the bar for what can be done with pro elves and high elves in NAF format, like you say, if they're given a bit more. Norm normally, they're, they're just not given that much. The, the tiering in most NAF tournaments is quite shallow. So even if it's tiered, wood elves, lizards, and undead, and to a slightly lesser extent, dark elves and dwarves are always the strongest teams. Whereas I, what I love about uh, what Gdanik does in his tiering and, and what we've got here in BBSL is that it, it's much heavier tiering um, it, between the tiers, the gaps are a lot more, and he does more layers than you get in most NAF tournaments. So we are seeing those races that are normally unloved in NAF tournaments, uh, not only getting some love here, but having some success. Yeah, brilliant stuff. So these are the these are the fixtures for week three. We've got Rick versus Fatin, Gdanik versus Shawnee, and Kanor versus Eliod. Yeah, so so going back on what we said on the table, what we see here, I think, is uh, is a last chance uh, saloon for myself and Gdanik. Particularly Gdanik, I, I think, could really make waves and was expected to be in contention for this qualifying-wise. So if he's going to put his bad start behind him, it has to be now. He has to drag Shawnee down a little bit to make a space for him to get up, and he has to get that win himself to, to elevate himself up the table. And, and the same for me versus Fatin, but that's going to be super tough. Um, but, uh, but you know, if, if I somehow can pick up the win, then it's the same situation for me. Otherwise, I think myself and Gdanik are going to be cut adrift uh, a little bit if we if we don't at least get a draw and, and preferably the win. And if Fatin or Shawnee get the win, that really, really cements them in that top three. And then we've got a slightly different one at the uh, at the bottom there. Kanor certainly hasn't made a bad start with, uh, with his two draws. And with Skaven, they're, they're a very capable team. So maybe Kanor can, uh, e even a draw would still keep him in contention for now. He obviously needs to win at some point. But to be honest, the bigger games, if he wants to qualify, are actually against the top three himself. So uh, so it wouldn't be a, a disaster for him to draw this one. Elliot, however, with two losses, absolutely has to win this one now. So so that's uh, that's a do or die for Elliot. Yeah, absolutely. Backs against the wall for Elliot. And uh, Cruz has his, has his bye week, and he might see everyone around him drop points, might he? He could be in a real good situation by having this bye week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to gonna look beautiful because, yeah, on, on the table, uh, yeah, he'll get those two points, and it's going to look fantastic and... Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it, exactly. He knows who he'll be cheering on in these games, um, <laughs> yeah. and then he'll know exactly what he has to do as well when he when he comes back in um, to to keep uh, the uh, the rivals at bay. 
Okay, so on to, on to Group B, we'll have a look at the results, and we've got uh, Andy Davo beating Calcium 2-1. Yeah, I mean we we know we know how good Andy is in that format with elves. So I think y you've got to say he he was the favourite going into this one, and that's no no disrespect to to Calcium. Um, calcium a, a bit like Crucifer, like was I I knew him as the Chorf coach, right? I saw him for years just playing Chorfs, and then more recently he played Wood Elves um, in in a in that first qualifier that they did for a blitz bit the first time they did that, and he smashed people up with Wood Elves, and so he kind of opened my eyes to like he is he is a really good all round coach, and he has been playing for years, and he's got that experience. So uh, I'm not saying he was a massive underdog, but you, you've got like one of the best coaches in his absolute prime format here of, of Andy playing elves in NAF format. So yeah, not not too surprising to see that he, he got the win. It was obviously close though. Yeah, it was it was actually a pretty good game. Um, in the first half, Calcium stole for eight turns just about successfully. <laughs> then Andy scored early and went for the win. And uh, and Calcium was like a three plus away from scoring. Uh, you know there was wow. lots of other things happened, but he was a three plus away from scoring. Failed that, and then it was all over as uh, as Andy got the ball and ran away, and and that was that. But yeah, <laughs> the, the dice rolls. You know the dice rolls can make a difference, can't they? Um, in a game. Oh, definitely. <laughs> as you can see here, his bonehead was fifty three percent. Oh wow! <laughs> Oh wow! So he basically didn't have an ogre for the entire game, almost. Yeah, so that that was that was rough. That was really rough. But uh, it was, it, you know, yeah. Andy Davo did play great, and uh, and you know, got the win there. Uh, rowdy of him to go for the win, though, isn't it? Like once your opponent in this format has has done the eight turn score, like the decision to to score early is really brave. Yeah. You, well, you, it, it was in his mind that he'd lost the first round, right? That was the thing. He's thinking he's got ah. to, he's really got to get, he's got to fight for the wins now with that loss in the pocket. Which I, I think maybe he didn't have to too much, right? Because I do, I did expect a lot of draws in this, uh, in this competition. And, but then they're all the dwarves, aren't they? So I think he was thinking it's not a dwarf team. I've got to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, f fair enough. But I, I agree with you that I don't think you need to panic too early i think if you've had two really bad results then you need to start to consider it but in in a seven man league there is time to end top two you, you don't have to get off to it's not like ccl where you're trying to get off to like six zero zero to even have a chance when the games get a bit more difficult at mid tv um yeah you can you can afford to to draw a, a few games and even lose one here and there and and still come out in a particularly second place yeah yeah, that's the thing. I, I did feel like it was going to be very scrappy, but, he, he, you know, he went for it, and obviously it turned out to be absolutely the right thing to do. Great for the viewers. Right, so now we've got Purple Chest and his Dwarves versus Inarion's Halflings. Yeah, uh, this one I caught, Jim, um, and uh, Inarion obviously has the Chef. First half, it took all three rerolls, and this was PC's drive. So uh, I've just noticed I've got the MVP here as the, the long beard as well. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, so you, you'd hope, obviously, as the halflings to, to really make that work for you in your favor. What what Anarian chose to do was uh, isolate some dwarves in the middle and really try and attrition them with the, with fouling with his dirty players which and hitting with his uh, mighty blow trees. Unfortunately, this did absolutely nothing. And, and in the meantime, the dwarves walked down the gap on the right-hand side and then stalled deep. And, and managed to do the eight turn grind and then the chef wasn't as kind in the second half and uh, dwarves managed to remove flings and uh and yeah ultimately turn them over and make it two nil yeah yeah i, I watched it too and it was it was pretty brutal wasn't it It was pretty brutal for the flings they got, yeah they got absolutely slaughtered in droves <laughs> <laughs> I was I watched this I was hoping I was hoping to you know pick up some tips and tricks from PC you know because I'm terrified of Inarian's halflings I'm sure I'm going to lose this game <laughs> and then I didn't learn anything because it was just it was the probably one of the most easy games of Blood Bowl I've ever seen played I <laughs> yeah I mean halflings are just so um, dicey aren't they they're so high risk high reward and some games they'll just hang in there like you'll be hitting halflings and their armor won't break or they'll only be stunned and for some reason you just can't remove halflings well that wasn't the case in this one at all so if, if you run into those halflings you're going to be in trouble but if you run into these halflings where they just fly off the pitch at every slight touch then you won't have any problem whatsoever uh, and, and also the other flip side of the coin is what, what they're trying to do 
do is the damage with the Dirty Player and the Mighty Blow. And again, sometimes they'll just be Murder Flings and they'll wreck a load of Dwarves and it doesn't take to remove too many, which is why I think Anarion went in so heavy so early in doing that. For you to then basically be able to overwhelm the Dwarves for the rest of the game because they just don't have the numbers that they need. But that didn't happen again here. And if it does against you, Jim, yeah, it might be a very, very different game. <laughs> yep. And the final game of Group B was Dionysian versus Mr. Page. And this ended in a 2-1 win for Dio. Yeah, I was I was really impressed with Dio in this one. Um, I think Mr. Page is playing well, and I'm, I'm really enjoying his uh, contributions to this. But uh, I think Dio showed his experience in this format. Uh, obviously, Mr. Page is generally a ladder coach, like myself. Some of the coaches here are so used to NAF format. They've got like 20 years NAF format uh, experience behind them, and... And, and Dio actually took a banging here. He, he had a lot of removals against him, and he still managed to etch out the 2-1, the because maybe at times, and, and it, I'm so uh, pot-calling the kettle black here to say this, but, you know, it, it's, it could be a weakness for me as well, is that you, you I think Mr. Page probably slightly overcommitted to the banging at times, and, and Dio took advantage, took the space, and, and managed to scrape the 2-1. Yeah, yeah, that sounds fair. Um, I think I missed this one, to be honest, but... Uh... Yeah, it's it. You know, Dio is all I know is Dio is amazing, amazing coach, and it's so hard to play against him. Like, um, I, you know, I, I'm really not looking forward to my week three match against him. It's going to be very, very, very tough. So good positionally, isn't he? Yeah, I, uh, absolutely doesn't put a foot wrong. And it, what scares me to death is that it, he really gets up for the big games as well. So he'll, he'll play fairly chilled on ladder and you'll think, oh, he's, he's, he's good, but he's so-so. Like he, he makes some mistakes and uh, doesn't win all these games. And then suddenly it comes to playoffs or a blitz pit and he's just this perfect machine. Like, <laughs> I, I, you know, it must take like quite a bit of like mental preparation and, uh, and then effort to like exerting himself. And it, it seems a strange thing to say. You feel almost silly saying it but you can be really tired after like a big blubble game can't you yeah. and like it, you, you can put a lot into it and I, I think he does but boy does it show like the levels that he reaches in the big games and uh, and yeah so yeah he's, he's managed to do that here and that leaves us with a table for group B purple chest riding high uh, with his two wins and me and Dio had the bye week um, have had a bye week with with a win and then Calcium and Andy both with a win and a loss Mr. Page and Anarian two losses out of two uh, yeah yeah group B a bit like the uh, the NWOB one day they hope to be in group A uh, no I'm, I'm kidding obviously um, but yeah so we, we've got three uh, three hundred percent coaches here which obviously immediately sets out uh, three favorites to be battling for the top two in a very similar way to we've seen in in uh, group A but then you've got two coaches that have a win and a loss and absolutely aren't uh, cut off at all it wouldn't take much for them to turn it around uh, Mr. Page and Inarian, however, they, they've definitely got their, their work to do. Um, to, they need to get winning immediately. And uh, like I said, unfortunately, this isn't a format Mr. Page has much experience in. And, and also the one minute turns. Uh, I, I haven't seen him play much in the way of Blitzpick qualifiers or anything. So uh, what, what I'm hoping is that he, he finds his feet and learns quickly. Um, I always remember, this is a really random uh, uh, comparison, but I always remember... Uh, Nadal at Wimbledon, one of his very first Wimbledons, Wimbledon 2006, I think it was. He was terrible in the early rounds when he was playing nobodies, and it, he just wasn't used to the grass, and he just won the French Open for the second time, so he was a great player, but he was terrible on the grass. And and then by the middle rounds, he, he managed to scrape past these these no, these hopeless players in the early rounds, and by the middle rounds, he was starting to play a bit better, uh, and he played some of the older like experts on grass, and he snuck past them as well because he'd played a bit better. And by the end, he got to the final against Federer, and he even took a set off Federer, who was just unbeatable at the time and then after that he was always excellent on grass you literally watched him improve and so my hope for mr page here and, and, and maybe it won't work out this time but is that he'll he'll learn really quickly from the format from the one minute turns from the nap format and and come back for, with some wins but it's it's certainly understandable with his first foray into this this style of blood bowl that he's he's not so far quite managed to get the results uh anarian of course an amazing coach slightly different situation but he's playing the halflings and he's playing halflings against a lot of dwarves and chorfs which is just awful so I, I just hope for him that his dice turn around and he murders some uh, dwarves and, and gets some wins that way. But I think realistically, it's, it's a battle of the top five. And right now we've got three sitting on top quite happily. Okay, and uh, this is the week three matches in Group B. We've got Inarian versus Andy Davo, Mr. Page versus Calcium, and myself versus Dio. 
So this is uh, this is a really interesting lineup, actually. So I'll start with the last one there. You versus Dio. Someone's O has to go. Um, so basically, yeah, uh, you neither of you or one of you will lose your. Uh, your sorry, both of you or one of you will lose your 100% record. That's guaranteed. So it's going to be um, PC with 100% record and maybe you or Dionysian unless you draw. Uh, but that's that's a really fascinating uh, result. Uh, sorry, match up there for, for you guys. And then the other two are the, the two mid-tablers with their one win, one loss against the two players with their two losses. So what we're going to see there is some people definitely start to get cut adrift, but it's a question of who. If Inarin or Mr. Page lose again, I think that is absolutely it. Andy and Kaz can probably handle uh, a draw, um, but obviously would like to pick up the wins. And, and if they are seen as easier targets um, because they're bottom of the table, um, then, then they'll definitely want to win these because they'll see them as uh, good chances for them to pick up a win. Um, but yeah, it's Andy and Kaz's chance to really stay at the pace of you top three and they know that one of you or Dio are going to drop points. And it's Anarin and Mr. Page's last chance, I'd say, to get back into this league. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I'd be very happy with the draw versus Dio. Um, so, you know, I think that's... And so I think that works out nicely for Purple Chess with his bye week again. You know, no one can really catch him here. Um, at best, he's looking at parity with, with somebody else on two wins, isn't he? And uh, Yeah, P PC's looking yeah really, really strong right now. There's still time for that to change. But yeah, he, he is going to come back from his bye week. Yeah, really happy. And if you want to see what, if you want to watch all of these matches, we do actually have a website now. I'll put the link in the description. And uh, from that, you can see who's casting all the games, when they're scheduled, all that stuff, as well as being able to join the Discord. Um, so yeah, it's looking really good for the viewers being able to keep track of the Super League. And uh, that's pretty much all we've got time for. So thank you very, very much for joining us, Rick. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. It's been glorious. And uh, good luck with your ogres. <laughs> 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 and thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.